All right. All righty. Hello and welcome to episode 63 of Fanatical Fridays. I'm here with Mickey Baines as always. Mickey, how you doing? Hanging in there. It's Friday. Uh, spring is here. Temperature has not arrived yet. <laughs> uh, I was in D.C. yesterday. It was it was a really nice warm D.C. day. Uh, but it's not here in Pennsylvania. Not I'm back home. So yeah. uh, just cold. Yeah. I'm waiting on nice weather <clears throat> to come. But I'm also thinking May 1 is going to be here before we know it. I've got clients who are thinking May 1 is going to be here before we know it. Mm -hmm. and so I've been focused and thinking a lot about them and and answering some questions, trying to build up some additional reports to kind of look at what are some new types of engagements that we could be measuring and assessing that help prepare us a little bit more for May 1 than we've been prepared for in the past. Yeah. Um, because we have some clients who have some numbers that seem to be a little higher than they normally would be. And so if we were to look a little deeper, what does that mean? What are we looking at? And um, and what does the numbers really tell us if we get there? Yeah. Um, so that's that's what I'm focused on right now. How, nice. how about you? What what What's going on in your world? Yeah. Oh, we are, I don't know, at the peak of prepping for NAGAP, which is a big conference that we always go to, yep. um, and really making sure that we're kind of leveraging and, and talking about the things that seem to be resonating with um, a lot of the clients that DD Agency works with now um, and trying to make shifts into more sustainable marketing. And, and mm -hmm. it's funny, I actually was uh, scrolling through Twitter the other day and saw Jamie Hunt um, was tweeting about, you know, maybe a hot take here. People are spending way too much in digital ads and they have no idea how they're doing. Uh, mm -hmm. And I feel like that is the challenge. We see that every, every client we eventually end up working with that tends to be the case. Um, and so I think that's one of those things of how do we shift people's mindsets to, okay, digital ads is great. You can peel back 25% of your ad spend, reinvest that in something like SEO or any type of content creation um, and just test that out and see if that works well and what that starts to get you and measuring that. And I think that's just, it's a big shift in people's minds and, and it's just, it's, it's a tough sell sometimes, but really trying to use conferences and a couple other sessions to really enlighten people yeah. about SEO and kind of the value of it. So well, I'm that's going to be a... spot. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. Yeah. So you want to, you want to get them to pivot because they don't really know exactly how the digital spin is going. So this is what's one of the things that is on my mind and something we've been doing with some clients to, to address it is if we give them the answer to the question and it's not an easy thing to do, let's be mm -hmm. clear. How are you really doing? And we were to show how they really are doing. What does that take? Why does, why, and, I, and I, I'm, this is a general question. I'm not putting you on the spot. So you answer yeah. this. Why don't institutions know how they're doing? Like what's the real rub of why they don't know how they're doing? Yep. Because I think if we can answer that question and demonstrate and show them, then the, the second part you're talking about, the other things that they really should be doing, mm -hmm. it's easy is an easier decision for them to make. Yeah. And it's not like you necessarily, if it's not a, one of your current clients, for sure you can. It's not something where you can say, okay, you do take steps A, B, and C, and you're done, and that'll show you exactly. It's not that if it was that right. simple, I'd already be doing it. Yep. Um, but we're running campaigns in one set of tools. We've got the information when someone converts going into another set of tools mm -hmm. and there is no connection yep. between them. Yep. There just isn't. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned that. We, uh, I was recording an episode of The Pivot with Tony Frega from DDMC and Jamie, who you mm -hmm. have CRM Prov with. And we were, the topic was um, how to put together an annual report that has value as we kind of approach you know, mm -hmm. June and, and the end of people's fiscal year. How do you make a report that goes like, here's the money that was spent and here's the value of all those things. And mm -hmm. we kind of came to the conclusion that unless you have a really robust reporting tool, and obviously we're a little biased here, but like a HubSpot, you can't know. There's too many dots to connect that you're going to spend 500 hours just getting all the data and trying to draw lines between them. Um, and that's... But isn't that worth it? Yeah, like, let's just it is. 3,000 hours. Yep. How many years have you gone asking that question without an answer? Mm -hmm. How many more years will you go asking that question without an answer? Yeah. And if you want to, I would say 
If we wanted to take 25% of that ad spend to spend it on something else this year, that's what you spend it on so that then you know what to spend it on every other year. Yeah. Um, you can, because then what you learn is, yes, we're spending this amount on, on ad spend. We might want to continue spending this amount on ad spend, but we, now we know where to tweak it. Well, mm -hmm. we may not know right away, but at least we have the data. Then the next round of updates that this data is going to tell us is where do we go to tweak it? What type of audience, what type of program, all these other things we can start diving in on. Yeah. And then we can also say, here's areas that if we were to reduce this by 25%, Here's the impact on that, because that's one of the reasons mm -hmm. they don't want to re move to something else, because they don't know the impact of how many students they actually would lose by cutting yeah. that 25 percent and then investing that somewhere else where they could get more. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly. you don't know how many more students you need to, that 25 percent to get. Mm -hmm. And so if we were to answer that and so there, I, there, there are the two systems I mentioned. And there needs to be a bridge between them that collects it all that then does your visualization. And I'd say, yes, you want that for your annual report, but I want it for a live dashboard. Yeah. So that I can see weekly, I can see monthly, all mm -hmm. throughout each recruitment cycle to see how we're doing. And if I'm down in one area, what does that mean for everything else? What do I plug in its place to pick it up or below that area in terms of a funnel visual? What else do I need to do in those other cycles below to make up for what I'm down on? Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's, that's important, but we're, I've totally just changed the entire topic of what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, but I, I will say we have this, I had this conversation yesterday at, I was at a, the UPSIA conference and we were talking yeah. about it. Um, and I think it can be done. Technology vendors present it like it's, it's as easy as ABC. Right. No, 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 <laughs> yeah. no, no, it is not. Yeah. Um, it's as easy as ABC when it's all in one tool. And until right. you get it in one tool, you know, and, and to an extent, you get a little closer with HubSpot. HubSpot can do some of those ad platforms. Mm -hmm. HubSpot, though, does not do your application. So you still have right. to have application data coming in. In most schools, when you've got HubSpot, you're taking stuff from HubSpot, sending it to your CRM, and not mm -hmm. necessarily doing the return. Right. Um, you need to be doing that return, and then HubSpot can do a much closer job of that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that it's still going to give you everything, but that's a step closer. Yeah. And it is one of those things for a school that needs to scale this. Take a step closer. Yeah. Identify what it means to be at the end to have it all. That's step one. And then you can determine what the step is that you take. If you just go to say, we're going to take a step closer first and don't talk about the end and just build the step and go to that step, you might be taking a step in the wrong direction. Right. And so the key is, is working with someone to figure out what is the ultimate solution of, of in combination connection of tools talking to one another that we can pull all this data and let us visualize it whether it's a tableau or power bi or argos cognos whatever the other reporting mm -hmm. tools that you have it in maybe you can get it into a crm and do it um but determine what that's going to be and then take a step forward that's in that direction yeah um, but but that until you do that you will be asking that question and and if you're not asking it and you're listening to this, you know somebody on your campus is asking. You know someone one, two, or three levels above you is asking that question. Mm -hmm. And when you say every year, I don't know, and they've invested in other, newer, additional technology, and you still say you don't know, that's more frustration that develops on their end. And so I would suggest that it is it is a good time. The technology exists to do it. You have to figure out what's right for your stack understand what data points you need to have to plug into it and start making those connections. Yeah. Yeah. I think you made a good point too, about understanding that end goal too, right? Of these, some of these platforms are massive um, and you're not going to get everything all built out in a month. Um, but you need to start kind of chipping away and understanding how you're getting closer to that bigger goal rather than we need this thing right now, build it out. However best we want to use email, let's kind of figure that out in the tool and then we'll figure out how to, you know, really do our list super well and how we want to name them and have all these. And it's like, now you have all of these, you're kind of doing them as if you're treating this one macro tool that's supposed to make everything kind of way more efficient and streamlined. And you're treating it as if it's seven different tools and each thing is its own thing that you need to like create a whole process and implementation plan for, but then completely forget about how all of these things kind of build on each other. Um, and I think that's, that's a really good point. And that's where we actually spend a ton of our time 
with clients who are getting on HubSpot is really like, how do we build this in a sustainable way for you? So that ideally, if you know, we're done onboarding, you could take this and run with it by yourself. You don't yep. need, you don't, we don't want you to have to be relying on us. That sometimes is the case just because of resources that a school has. Um, but that's not, not really the end goal. And um, yeah, I think a lot of people kind of, and that's why maybe, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think people buy the one-off, like I'll do Facebook ads, I'll do Google ads, I'll use Hootsuite, I'll use Gravity Forms, I'll use, you know, Mongoose for chatbot. I'll use all these other things all separated um, because it seems easier or why, why would someone make that decision in the first place? Do you think? Mm -hmm. You're asking a very weighty question. <laughs> uh, why? Because they don't know better. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're either, they don't know better or they really have it together mm -hmm. and they know how to make all the various point solutions work. If there are certain CRMs that you can have, and I'm not saying they're good or bad in doing it this way, but there's certainly have that, won't have all the features. So if you want to have chat and chat bots and your CRM doesn't have it, then you need one. And so you go and get one. But the products that you look at, some of them don't natively integrate to the CRM that you have. And they're going to skip over that point and talk and, and talk about that and not talk about how difficult and how challenging or maybe near impossible it is to connect the two. Um, and the CRM vendor doesn't know you're doing that. And so they're not going to tell you. And honestly, the CRM vendor doesn't know usually anyway, if I'm being fully honest about it. Um, but what I would tell you as someone who lives the technology side is if you don't get a chat system, bots, live chat that integrates with the CRM, it is a huge mistake. I don't care mm -hmm. how good that chat and chat bot is yeah. for you to grow and scale. You need that data that's in that chat system in mm -hmm. the CRM so that then you can further segment your uh, communications, make them more relevant, make them more timely and make them more engaging for your prospect. If you can't get to that level of communication, you're losing students. Right. And when you don't connect the chatbot, you're losing some of the data that you may not be able to use right away. But in six months or a year, you should be using that data. Mm -hmm. What am I talking about? What questions are they asking? If someone is on a bot asking a question, pick it, pick whatever question that they're asking. And you're not then following up with a series of messages about that. That's a mistake. Yeah. Did you get the answer you, you wanted? Automated. I don't want to have a human have to type that out. I want it to come to make it look like it's from a human, but I want my CM to send it out. You can't do that if you don't have it connected. You can't do yeah. it. If your chatbot says, well, they can send that message instead, that's great. But then that's still not getting to your CRM to sit, tell your CRM, hey, a student had this question and we confirmed that they got the answer they needed. What do we want to do next? You mm -hmm. just can't do it. Yeah, you gotta have those connected. So why are they buying it? They just don't know. Yeah. Or they are at the other end of the scale. They do know, and they know that they have a programmer that can connect it. Right. And so, and, and because there are so many products on the market that are all being pushed, you've got all this stuff in front of you. You don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. What I would suggest you do is define the to a level of great specificity. How do we connect and engage our students from automated communications from our direct outreach that we are capable of doing. What are our limitations? What do we want to do? And then you can start to identify the requirements of what the technology needs to do. And when I say what it is you need to do, it's not just for right now, but think two years out. Right. What is it you always said you want to do that you're not doing? That needs to be in it. And then you need to, once you have all those requirements, then you have to start saying, okay, what do, what do we have the capability to do with our current technology? And what don't we have the capability to do? And then you find the products that start to fill that. And then as you're um, investigating and going through the demos to see those products, the other questions need, then need to be is, how does your product going to connect in with this? Mm -hmm. and, and to take that to the real level detail, ask those vendors, are you gonna connect that to our other systems for us? Is yeah. that included in the cost if you are? If you aren't, who does that? Do you have a, a product partner some firm that does this for you i want to talk to them and know what that's going to cost mm -hmm. and i want to see their references as well as your vendor as a company your reference to the client you want to see all that information so that you know it can happen and you're yeah. not just saying oh yes we can do that because very rarely is the technology vendor going to say no we cannot do that <laughs> right yeah. right and if they say no they really mean no there's no way yeah. if there's a way to do it whether or not they've done it or whether or not the salesperson has seen it done or had mm -hmm. it with any of their respective clients 
of their own in whatever territory they cover, they if they if they just know that it could be done, then when you ask, do you do this? The answer is going to be yes. Right. That's yeah. just the answer. And so mm-hmm. if you don't know, you'll never ask that question and you'll get sold something that may or may not work. And that's the risk. And back to your point of early at the very beginning of this, when you start talking about these questions of, you know, could we use them as money SEO and get a better return? Another reason that you'll get pushback on that. And any enrollment leader out here has been doing this for any amount of time is going to be shaking their head. Yes. When they hear this, but, but the reason is because they've made one of those purchasing decisions before by someone who said, yes, that can happen. And it really couldn't, or it could, but there are 17 steps that have to be done. And there's no one at that company or on your institution that can do it. And they don't give you any names of people who can't. Yeah. And you get pissed off about it and you just, uh, I'm not, no, no one's going to talk to me in this anymore. Yeah. And that experience kills your ability to connect and, and build an experience right. with other people. Yeah. Um, and it weighs in heavily on it. And so that's, you know, what should you do? You, you need to skill up in terms of not knowing all the details, but knowing what questions to ask. Yeah. So um, if yeah. people are looking for different tools, you know, let's maybe chatbot or anything else, um, where should they go? Or what should they do to start finding the one that would be the best fit for them? And I think that's probably what people are wondering of like, I can Google chatbot tools yep. all day long and read yep. these things, but I don't know. Yep. I have Target X and I don't know if this one works with Target yep. X and they it's don't great make it specific on their references. They're just yep. giving you people that use it and really like it and are their biggest yep. fans. Maybe none of them use Target X though. So now what do I do? Yep. Um, and I think so, maybe that's where a lot of people get stuck. So I'll help you with that. Perfect. Well, say, say your say your Target X or Enrollment Rx, or your Salesforce. You go to the App Exchange and you search there. Because in the App Exchange will be the companies that provide a product with a native Salesforce connection that mm-hmm. has been reviewed from security purposes and approved by Salesforce, you can find it there. HubSpot has the HubSpot Marketplace. You go there and you search, mm-hmm. right? Um, Slate does not have that internal thing, but in the Slate forums inside, if you're a customer, you can ask. You can also ask Slate what others you know are folks using. You can go to the Slate Partner Program. Any of the partners that list there that help do uh, Slate communications or implementation, ask them. Mm -hmm. Not to do it for you because they're going to try selling you stuff. But ask (laughs) them what other, let's just say, chats that you have, if that's what you're looking for. If you're looking for a video integration tool, you know, what are you using? If it's... um, Online, like meeting like Zoom, you're trying to find one of those, ask them what they use. That's, in, or, or search in the marketplace or whatever the, the app partner exchange, whatever the, the, the phrase is. Mm-hmm. Um, but I ask them because other people will be pitching you. Uh, and I can give you a good example. And I'm not trying to throw this particular um, company under the bus. I think they've got a good product. But say six years ago, um, Mongoose is a texting app owned by, I think it's Cadence. It's called Cadence Mongoose now. Used to be on the Salesforce App Exchange. We had clients on it. I still have clients on it, but they're no longer on that App Exchange. You don't get that integration anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, but they they're very active in education. They do they they have a good product. But yeah. if you can't get that connected to Salesforce, then you're out. Right. It, it just doesn't work. Um, there are other ones out there. Um, Signalvine. What's their new name? Modern Campus. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, I think that's yeah. Modern Campus now. Anyway, t- SMS tool. Right. Um, there's tiers to get to like a Salesforce connection. If you've got the lowest package, then you don't have that native integration. You're going to have to upgrade to that. Um, mm-hmm. And that's you know, a good question. You might see that they are and think, oh, well, um, I see they're in an app exchange. I can, I can integrate with them. And I, you go on the website, find pricing, then try to work around the sales process, and which I, I try to work around the sales process every time myself. <laughs> I agree with that. But if you don't know when you're going to make that purchase and you get the lowest package, oh, this is not too bad. I can afford this. No, you need another tier up probably when right. you're making that connection. Uh, yeah, it's a pain in the butt and it costs more when you see that and it's frustrating, but that's the business model. that we're yeah. But that's what you have to have. And I will tell you for that few couple thousand dollars that it, you pay extra to get to that level, um, you have the potential. It's not a given. You still have to work to get it, but the door opens to be able to work and get more students mm-hmm. way more than what you're paying. 
yeah. um, for it. You, again, you have to work for it. It just right. opens the door to give you access to work towards it. If you don't buy it, the door doesn't open and you can't even work for it. You got to find right. other ways, more painful, time consuming ways to make up for it. So, right. But that, um, that yeah. time saved and, you know, the overall energy and frustration saved of having that data sync between tools for a couple thousand dollars. Like if you're not spending it on the tool, you're spending it on somebody on your team to then go and do it, around. if not more, and then not do other things because they're spending the time, you know, doing yeah. manual uploads or whatever it might be that isn't yeah. really worth their time either yeah. when they could be doing way more impactful stuff, it's an, more towards the bottom of the funnel. That's what's happening. Uh, yeah. I've seen that. In fact, I see that with, with folks that are still on, on, on the, Mon the Salesforce clients are using Mongoose. Let's just say that. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of importing and exporting of lists. Mm -hmm. Um, and I will tell you, you know, from my world, when I start talking CRM 101, CRM 201, 31401, I can tell you what doesn't occur at a 201 level, manually importing and exporting. <laughs> yeah. And if you want to be really intermediate, not even necessarily advanced, you got to get rid of that stuff. You can't yeah. be manually. But you don't have time for that. Right. I've got too many other things I need to analyze and assure, and then I got to work on communication. There's not enough time. You got to mm -hmm. get rid of the, the stuff that you shouldn't have to do now. When you do that, there will be times that you have to cut a corner. You have to make a compromise. You might lose some functionality that a product that doesn't integrate does that you like. Mm -hmm. I don't say I recommend 100% of the time that you forego that functionality. There might be a time that it's a big pain point to forego and you don't. That is, uh, that might be the case. There mm -hmm. were some chatbots that were out there for higher ed. Four years ago, one of the first ones out there that was really good and anything behind it was so far behind. Yeah. There were times I would say, forego that, do your manual import export because everything else, other things are catching up now though. Right. They're catching up. Yeah. Chat GPT exists now. Yeah. Um, something that can learn on its own better and faster than what that other tool could have done. And so mm -hmm. now you have to really think, do we still do this manual? Cause I, I can replicate this or get much, much closer now and i can take that time people think of it as time saving it's not a time saving it's time reallocation yeah you're not saving time you're just reallocating the time that you no longer have to spend on something else that allows you then to move up to that intermediate level of complexity or maybe advanced um, yeah but those, you know those are all there and, and again it's it's that you know, having that knowledge um mm -hmm. and by the way once we solve that question of if we go all the way back to the initial question of what is that conversion how how is that campaign really performing um once you start to answer that then you're going to start looking at details of how is that follow-up on that campaign actually re working right if you don't have the tools integrated you're going to be back to that first question you have i right. can't answer it i yep. don't know because i have 10 or 20 or 50 percent of the communication that we've done with the student in this system that can tell us how we're performing the other 50 percent are in other tools yeah you can't come up and with I, a real conclusion on it yeah and i think you know back to your point too of spending that money and reallocating your time into analyzing data rather than trying to get the data to be accurate in two systems uh, because then let's say you're you know doing some digital advertising and now you can you're realizing that like oh okay i'm getting every ten thousand dollars i spend i get x i'm not going to spend $10,000 again, I'm going to spend five. You already made back the money that you spent extra to get that data to sync. And now you can either reallocate it or you can just, hey, we're just not going to spend it. Um, and I think that's, you know, one of the things just, it's a little bit of a gamble, but having more data is never going to hurt you and saving you time on not doing the manual work is never going to hurt you. Like that's a win-win. Yep. Um, there are very few scenarios in which I think somebody splurges for the extra couple thousand dollars and then regrets it and goes like, Oh, that was definitely not worth it. Um, and so just thinking through, yeah, how, how schools can kind of better maybe find a pocket where it's like the biggest gap of reporting and kind of start there. And maybe that's what you want to inch into of yeah. we're really blind when it comes to, again, let's just stick with kind of the chat bot. We're blind as to like, okay, we've had a thousand people go through this. How are people actually going through it? Where are they actually taking the next action? Are they even taking the next action and kind of reporting on all that? Whereas like, it just comes out as this massive CSV and you're just like, well, that's way, I'm not gonna look at a thousand rows 
of data points yep. um, and try and you're exactly make right. a report out of that. Uh, and and if you have an admission counselor doing that for you because they're the ones on the behind the scenes helping administer it, they probably aren't great with pivot tables. Right. They help you do some really advanced reporting out of Excel yeah. um, on it. And then it's still isolated. You know, we talk about um, on campuses trying to eliminate the silos. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a mini silo. When you think of all these solutions, don't talk to the other system. That's a mini silo. You want to get rid of the big silos? How about start by getting rid of the big silos? Mm -hmm. Then you can get rid of the big silos. And it's, it, it all, it, it, it's all connected. It comes into those things. Um, it, it just is. It, yeah. You know, it could be, you know, let's just talk. We're talking bots. What are we, what are we looking at? What are we missing in there? Well, what page does someone enter the bot? With? Right. Because you know what that tells me? That tells me the page is most confusing. Mm -hmm. What does that do for the marketing team? That tells you where to focus your time. Right. What questions are, are they answering where the, where the student says, Did, was this helpful? Yes or no. So you know what answers to rewrite. What's the top three questions you think people are asking versus what's actually coming into the bot? Yeah. And those top questions, those are the questions your content should be based on. Right. If you don't, you're ignoring the elephant in the room. And when mm -hmm. you ignore the elephant in the room, it becomes a distraction and you don't pay attention to what else is happening in the room. Right. Yeah. Know yeah. the questions they're asking. We always think we know, and I can ask counselors and usually get pretty good information. And that's usually where I'm starting with bots to be sure where we got these questions covered. But confirm it. Find the follow-up questions once we give an answer. Find what they're doing, the actions and activities. If bots not connected, guess what? That's going to be hell trying to find out. Yeah. Find that out. Build follow-up campaigns, not just how did it go. Here's more content on scholarships. Here's more content on the finance concentration for our business of administration degree. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. it. And, Those are the yeah. things you've got to start doing. That is getting to 201. That's not right. even 301, folks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing. I think, as you're saying, like, when you're you're not doing those things, you're kind of making decisions just based on anecdotes. Well, yes. well I hear people ask these couple questions. Yep. And it's, that was five people. Yep. You have yep. thousands of prospects. And you're basing how you want to structure your chatbot yes. on five people um like well, and, that is and so and it, let's say it's even more than five people because yeah. when i ask counselors while they might be right what they're right about are the questions that applicants and students yeah. that enroll ask not right. necessarily questions that inquiries ask because especially in the world of traditional admissions mm -hmm. or more passive graduate or online admissions we're not doing that speed to lead that at more assertive direct outreach where I'm having either via email, phone, text, whatever, chat, that direct interaction with, with prospective students. Right. And that, at the top of the funnel, those are the ones we, we want to know the answers to the most or what questions they ask most so that we can answer them so that then they want to have a conversation with someone. But yeah. because we don't want to be sold to, our prospective students don't want to be sold to, they want to avoid those actual conversations that they can. And mm -hmm. so they're trying to find the information. Those tools that allow you to understand what information they want and of the information they get from you, how helpful it is or is not, that's what helps drive improving that and then getting them faster, more helpful content that then lead to the conversation you want to have with them. Right. Yeah. And that's where, too, I mean, connecting all of your, your data and understanding those questions. Ch now go change your comm flow. Add the information that people are asking because they're not getting it. Not that you don't want people talking to you. You do. That's awesome. But the quicker you can answer their questions and the less they have to come to you, they are going to be people that are not going to ask because they're too shy. They don't want to or they feel yep. uncomfortable. And so if you're able to kind of weave that comp or that um, information into your comp flow, you're now getting another segment of people that you may want to apply that maybe wouldn't have because they never had access to that information or they just thought it doesn't exist. There isn't an answer. It just always depends. And now I have to go talk to this counselor for 30 minutes and explain my situation, this, that, and the other. I don't want to do that. This school made it easy for me. I'm going there instead. Um, and I think that's a big, yeah, a sticky point that, again, is the, the amount of value for, again, we're still talking about like this couple thousand dollar purchase on top of your core purchase and all of the value that you get from it. And I think that's, I mean, if I was a chatbot software, that's what I would be listing as like my UVPs of like, 
you spent and you get this integration thing, while it may seem a little bit more expensive, here's all the value you get from it. There are hundreds of things that you can do with that data um, to really improve all of your other marketing tools and tactics, your website, et cetera, um, that probably just aren't apparent when you're reading the, like, why you should get this tool, yes. um, which is unfortunate, but. So, so I would say, here's our, here's our takeaway. Action steps. You've made it this far into this episode. What should you do? Yeah. A, ask the question. Here's the question to ask, and then we'll tell you who to ask it to. What does it take to connect our ad spending platforms where we post the ad, where we write the ads, get them to launch on whatever sites we're using, mm -hmm. and our conversion in the CRM? How do we connect it? Now, here's who to ask it to. A, if you're not the administrator and, or the director of those technology systems or the person that's most responsible for them, you give it to that person. And then that person needs to ask the vendors of each of those groups, respectively, bring them together on a call. How do we connect these tools? What's the best way? Because you might need a third tool, third party, another third tool to plug it into. Let yeah. them guide you, give you some advice, and then you can go in your own sales process to go find the right pr platform for you that does those things. That's do that second. When you look at all the other little systems that you're using, here's the next question. Are they all connected to your CRM? If the answer is no, find out why, what it will take to get them connected. And then yeah. go to the person responsible for your roadmap of how you're going to invest some dollars to support the CRM in the coming year. Find out what it would take to get that on the priority list. Yeah. That's that's it. Do those things. Yeah. And get the, your your decision group talking about those things. Yeah. The, the value you will get in the coming year will be good. The mm -hmm. years behind it, phenomenal. Like yeah. the value, it, and it's it's going to help next year, but it opens the door. And enabling those things will open the door dramatically to more things. Right. Yeah. So do that. Yeah. That's the takeaway. And if those and if those don't work, just Call DM Mickey on LinkedIn, and he'll yeah. he'll tell you what to do. Yeah. D yeah. <laughs> Contact me on LinkedIn. And I'll give you Shane's cell <laughs> number so you can start texting him. I, I, I look. I am truly happy to talk to anyone. Uh, I always say, you know, I'm happy to give someone an hour, thirty minutes, an hour yeah. of my time, and if I can solve your problem, then. You don't need my help beyond that anyway. That's good. Right. Let's do that yeah. and see how far you can get. I'm happy to do that anytime right. because that is, we get asked, to, our, our firm, we get asked to do a lot of complex and technical things in CRM. And, and while, yes, we can technically go build those things, mm -hmm. the frequency with which clients are ready to truly deploy those things is low. Yeah. Right. So normally we have to do is scale that back a little bit so that we can build up. You're not collecting this information or you don't have your chatbot in there. So you want to get really super personalized with your emails. I got to get some more data. We don't have it. You do because yeah. you've got these other tools you're using that aren't connected. Let's right. get them connected. And now, or you've got tools connected, but you're not using them in a more advanced way that then um, enable data to be collected. Because you have mm -hmm. to have that data to understand what someone experiences, to understand how long it's been since they've taken action, to understand what the last action was they took, yeah. or the frequency that they take actions, or the, the types of actions that they take. And then that's what it. that's the type of data you need to get to that more personalized and more relevant right. uh, communication with them. So, yeah. you know, that's where you need to be moving. And, and I'm happy to help people start thinking about their next two or three steps to take to get them on that path. Awesome. Well, this was truly a fanatical Friday, given that our topic was how to turn <laughs> your students into influencers. Yes. Um, so change I guess title. we'll be... We've got to go change the title of this episode. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess we'll do that. Disappointed folks like <laughs> Yeah. I haven't heard him use that word at all. I even had so a we'll, way to reference. Yeah, and I, we'll and uh, we'll have to do that in in the next episode of Fanatical Fridays. That's um, but, how we do things. <laughs> yeah, you know, we found something that we needed to be more fanatical about than social right. influencers. But we're hey. coming back to social influencers. Follow your because passions. You know what? This is the segue to that. Yeah, one that's of the things true. we're talking about is why don't people use them more? Some of it mm -hmm. is they don't know how really to use it. They don't trust it. They don't know how to invest the right time or dollars into it. But right. again, it comes back to that trust issue. They're getting burned on these other things and they, there's mm -hmm. no real dim, demonstrable evidence of how it works or doesn't work. Let's start answering the questions of what is working, what isn't. 
And then we let's apply that when we get to social influences. How do you measure what is and isn't? You're not yeah. going to get a concrete how many people enrolled from it. We're not right. there yet in, in, in data analysis. We're not there yet. Mm-hmm. But but you can start thinking about other ways that you can measure to understand what type of value it does offer. And if we don't start talking about that, some of the folks that are more conservative and reticent against going in that direction will never go in that direction. Yeah. And they also are putting themselves more at risk because they're staying, staying too traditional, too right. conservative. And other schools will start taking advantage of that, uh, that they're competing against. Right. It's a cycle of, of death that's going on. <laughs> and so, you know, we want to help start answering that question as the same time talking about how to do it as well. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. All righty. Well. Thank you all again for listening um, to the most fanatical Friday that we've had in quite a while. Um, Hopefully we will see you again in two weeks. Thanks. Thanks for listening, everyone.